We will make our decisions because we are afraid of what people think, because we are afraid of what people are going to do, how they're going to treat us, how they're going to respond if we do something that they don't agree with. I am anxiety ridden when I am constantly living a life trying to make sure that everybody approves of me living a life of pleasing people. I love in Galatians 1.10 where Paul says, am I here for the approval of people? No, indeed, I am here for God's approval. If I were here for the approval of people, then I would not be a servant of Christ. Hey there, beautiful people. My name is Emma and I am so thankful that you're here and I'm so excited for us to get into the word today because today we are talking about being afraid of people and I don't know about you but this is something that for a very long time I have had to continually lay before the feet of God and trust him and surrender to him and trust him and confess that I'm being afraid of what people think and trust him and confess that I've made a decision out of trying to appease the opinions of people, trying to make sure that people like me, trying to make sure that I keep the quote unquote peace by appeasing all opinions. Like I've had to take that before the Lord a lot because it's something that I have noticed. I have a natural tendency <laughs> to just live out of fear of what people think, out of having this drive of like wanting the approval of people. And then whenever we live that way, we end up making decisions that if we had been confident, then we wouldn't have made that decision. We end up making decisions that we look back on and it's like, that was not what I actually wanted to do. Or maybe that's what you wanted to do because that's what other people were doing as well. But you look back and it's like, if I could do that differently, I wouldn't do it because it ended up bringing so much hurt. It ended up being something that just didn't help me. It was not beneficial in my life to go and do what I was expect what I thought everybody was expecting of me to go and do what I thought would approve everybody's opinion to go and live in such a way that I just made sure everybody liked me and that was the filter by which I made all my decisions um and it's not something that the Lord wants for us it's not something that we were made for and so when we live a life just in fear of what people think it's exhausting and it weighs down on our hearts because it's not something that we were meant to carry. And so I'm really excited about today's video because I really believe that it's gonna bring some fresh perspective and show us what the filter should be when we're making decisions, whose approval it is that we were made to seek and the confidence and the difference that we can really like, easily identify between living our lives in fear of the Lord versus living our lives afraid of people. That's what we're talking about today. If y'all go with me to Exodus chapter one, that's where we're going to be. And I think this is just, honestly, I find this to be like powerful. I'm trying to even think of a word to do it justice. But whenever I read this in Exodus 1, I'm like, this is fierce. This right here, what we're about to read is confidence. This is trust in the Lord. This is, wow, I, I care so much about God and I'm so confident that God's way is best. And the God is the Lord of my life and I do take his commandments seriously. So even when... I am being told to do one thing. I am being commanded to do one thing and it goes against God. I'm, I'm going to refuse to do it. I'm not going to be pressured to do it to make sure I appease that, uh, that command. I am following the commands of my God. And I just think it's, yeah, I just think it's fabulous. So we're going to learn from some midwives today in Exodus chapter one. In Exodus chapter one, I'm just going to read like this whole, the whole entry starting in, um, I guess I can start in verse one because it just kind of helps us understand what's going on. So, and also I think this is really fun because some of this will be familiar from my, from my previous video about Exodus one, but this is going to be really good as we just continue to read in the chapter. 
So starting in verse one of chapter one, it says, these are the names of the sons of Israel who came to Egypt with Jacob, each with his household. You have Reuben, Simeon, Levi, and Judah, Issachar, Zebulun, and Benjamin, Dan and Naphtali, Gad and Asher. All the descendants of Jacob were 70 persons. Joseph was already in Egypt, and then Joseph died in all the generation, um, including his brothers. But the people of Israel were fruitful and increased greatly. They multiplied and they grew exceedingly strong so the land that um, they were in was filled by, by them because their people were just growing so much. Verse 8. Now there arose a new king over Egypt who did not know Joseph. And he said to his people, Behold, the people of Israel are too many and too mighty for us. Come, let us deal shrewdly with them, lest they multiply. And if war breaks out, then they'll join our, our enemies and fight against us and escape from the land. So basically, the new king is not happy about the expansion of the Israelites. He's not happy that the land is full of them. He's not happy that they're growing strong, that they're multiplying. He is not happy about the idea that if they were to partner with their enemies and go against them, then they would be defeated. He just, he's intimidated by them, honestly. And so he's like, let's treat them with incredible disrespect. Let's make sure that they are basically our slaves is what's about to happen because he does not want them to multiply. He does not want them to overpower his kingdom. And so that's what's taking place. Verse 11, therefore they set taskmasters over them, being the Israelites, to afflict them with heavy burdens. They built for Pharaoh store cities. I may pronounce this wrong, but Pithom and Ramses. <laughs> Verse 12, but the more they were oppressed, the more the Israelites were oppressed by the Egyptians, the more they multiplied. There is something, there's, there's a word in that too. The more they multiplied and the more they spread abroad, which... I don't know, I just think it's cool. This is a total side note, but it makes me think of Romans 5 when, let me just read Romans 5 to you. I wasn't even planning on talking about this, but this is just really good, and I hope that I, that this encourages whoever needs it. But in Romans chapter 5, it says, Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him we have also obtained access by faith into this grace in which we stand and we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. So basically saying we're standing in grace and we have access to it, full availability to grace and the glory of God, and we're standing in it. We have hope in the glory of God that is to come. Verse 3, not only that, but we rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not put us to shame, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. And I that just came on my mind as we were reading that, because it literally says that the more the Israelites were oppressed, the more they multiplied and spread abroad. So just thinking about the as we walk through sufferings in this world, I can be encouraged that as I set my eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen, I can trust that a greater work is being done, that God promises he's going to finish the good work that he started in me. He promises that he's working all things together for the good of those who love him and who are called according to his purpose. I can trust that endurance is being built up in me. Strength and character is being built up in me. I can trust that I am, as I'm walking through this, I know that I am, it is being, it is being led to hope hope that won't put me to shame and God's love is poured out on me by the power of his spirit. So just be encouraged that beautiful things are being multiplied as you look to the Lord in the midst of difficulty and I just think that's so like our God, isn't it? That he brings beautiful things out of out of places that we don't we couldn't imagine beauty could come from. I'm just so thankful for that. But anywho, <laughs> um so they are still multiplying, but the Egyptians were in dread of the people of Israel because all this is happening, um, because they're continuing to multiply, even though they're being oppressed. 
Verse 13, so they ruthlessly, the Egyptians are just pushing harder. So they ruthlessly made the people of Israel work as slaves and made their lives bitter with hard service in mortar and brick and in the, all kinds of work in the field. In all their work, they ruthlessly made their work as slaves, made them work as slaves. Verse 15, this is where we get to our midwives. Then the king of Egypt said to the Hebrew midwives, one of whom was named Shifra and the other Pua. Verse 16, this is what he said to them. When you serve as midwife to the Hebrew women and see them on the birth stool, if it is a son, you shall kill him. But if it is a daughter, she shall live. This is insane. Talk about being intimidated to the point that you're putting the people of Israel in slavery and wanting to ensure that they don't multiply. So you're instructing the midwives to kill all of the baby boys that are born. Just horror, absolute evil. So this is the instruction that he gives to the midwives. As king, he is king. And this is what he's telling the Hebrew midwives to do. And then we get to their response. Verse 17. Guys, this is so good. But the midwives feared God and did not do as the king of Egypt commanded them, but let the male children live. But the midwives feared God. Another version says, but because the midwives feared God, they did not do what the king had commanded and they chose to let the baby boys live. Do you notice what drove their decision making? It was fear of God. And I think oftentimes, though it may not be as extreme as a king ordering midwives to kill the baby boys that are being born, in our day-to-day -day interactions in work, on campus, in our own home, we can be approached with decisions to make big and small. And instead of our decision being made because we fear the Lord, we will make our decisions because we are afraid of what people think, because we are afraid of what people are going to do, how they're going to treat us, how they're going to respond if we do something that they don't agree with. And the reason I'm saying fear and afraid is because this word fear, that it says because the midwives feared God, they made the decision they made. This word fear, it means to regard with feelings of respect and reverence. Consider hallowed or exalted or be in awe of. But to be afraid of people, to live in fear of people, it's trembling, it's fear, it's anxiety. I am anxiety ridden when I am constantly living a life trying to make sure that everybody approves of me living a life of pleasing people. I love in Galatians 1.10 where Paul says, am I here for the approval of people? No, indeed. I am here for God's approval. If I were here for the approval of people, then I would not be a servant of Christ. These midwives were servants of the Lord. And because they lived in reverence, in awe, in just a hallowed, God, I exalt you position. <gasps> Remy's joining us because, <laughs> guys, this is Remy. <laughs> because they lived in that manner, they made their decision based on, I fear the Lord. And therefore, the decision I make is going to honor him, even though I know that the king is not going to be happy about it. He's drinking water. <laughs> so, and as I said, the king is not going to be happy about it. This is what I mean. So verse 18, so the king of Egypt called the midwives because he got word. He called the midwives and said to them, why have you done this? Why have you let the male children live? Why have you done this? Verse 19, the midwives said to Pharaoh, because the Hebrew women are not like the Egyptian women. <laughs> this is their reason. For they are vigorous and give birth before the midwife comes to them. So he's basically saying like, the, the babies are coming before we can get to them. So we, we can't, <laughs> we can't. Um, get to the baby boys in time, where in actuality, they purposefully were making the decision they were making. But 
That's what they taught Pharaoh. And it says in verse 20, so God dealt with the midwives and the people multiplied. Um, oh, sorry, I missed a word. Verse 20, so God dealt well with the midwives and the people multiplied and grew very strong. I think this is so powerful, verse 20, that God dealt well with the midwives. He cared for them. He provided for them. He treated them with such kindness and such grace because they feared him. And I think <laughs> he's in a playful mood. And I think what's so powerful about this, I wanna share some Psalms with you about like how, how much the Lord is honored whenever we live a life in fear of him, whenever we make our decisions based on fear of the Lord and not being, not living afraid of what people think, not living, not letting fear of what people think drive our decisions. Okay, Josh Caden got Remy. He's, Remy's so fun. It's like sometimes he'll be chilling down here with me and um, as I'm like recording a video, he'll just sleep. But then other times he's like, I want to play. We love having a puppy. We love it so much. But I wanted to share these Psalms with you because it goes to show how much the Lord is honored whenever we live a life in fear of Him and refuse to let our decisions and our steps be decided by fear of what people think. So in Psalm 147, 10 through 11, it says that His being the Lord, His delight is not in the strength of the horse nor his pleasure in the legs of man. So it's basically saying like, not in all the strength we can muster up, not all of the trophies that we can display, not, not all like how high we can get in authority. Like that's not where his delight is in. It's not in like, I love in um, 1 Samuel 16, 7, where it says that the Lord, like he doesn't look at people the way that we look at people for we look at the outward appearance this is the lord looks at the heart and here we see that because it says the lord does not delight in these things his pleasure isn't in these things but the lord does take pleasure in those who fear him in those whose hope are in his steadfast love he sees our heart. He takes pleasure in that. He takes delight in that. That's why we see he treated the midwives so well. He dealt well with them because they lived in fear of him. They lived with regards of feeling, to regard with feeling, feelings of respect and reverence. They considered um, the Lord to be exalted and they were in awe of him. And because they revered the Lord, they made the decision that they made. And I love this. I've shared this before. It's one of my like favorite verses ever. I say that about so many verses, but this is definitely one that I have memorized and I pray over my life all the time and think on a lot, especially when it comes to fearing the Lord. In Psalm 86, 11, it says, teach me your way, O Lord, that I may walk in your truth. Unite my heart to fear your name. Other versions say, God, give me an undivided heart. Unite my heart. Give me an undivided heart that I may fear your name. Isn't that so good? God, like, don't let anything take up residence in me that causes me to make a decision that disregards you as Lord. Search me, know me, test me, know my anxious thoughts. See if there's any offensive way in me. And God, remove it. Give me a united heart of you that I may, that I may live a life in fear of your name. And then if we'll keep on reading in, in Exodus, re repeating verse 20. So God dealt well with the midwives and the people multiplied and grew very strong. Verse 21, and here we, we read it again. And because the midwives feared God, we see him, we see God taking pleasure in that. It says he gave them families because they feared God. That's what he delights in. He delights in a heart that is pure before him. He delights in a heart that reveres him as the Lord. He delights in a heart that trusts in him and that is confident in him, even when it means, because a lot of time it does, I'm going against the grain. I'm going against the crowd. I'm going to do things that aren't most popular, but it's because I fear the Lord. 
Verse 22, then Pharaoh commanded all his people, every son that is born um, to the Hebrews, you shall cast into the Nile, but you shall let every daughter live. So sad. But then that's when we read at the start of Exodus 2, Moses comes on the scene when his mom puts him in a woven basket down the Nile. And um, that's when all, all of that, that's a whole beautiful story to get into. But really, I wanted to hone in on the midwives today that they made the decision that they made because they feared the Lord. And I want to share this last verse with you. Proverbs 29, 25. The fear of man lays a snare, but whoever trusts in the Lord is safe. And I feel like we can read that and be like, okay, I'm really encouraged because I kind of understand what that means. But some of those words like fear or snare, like, or even safe, like, what actually does that mean? And so I did a word, did word studies on these things. So fear, as I said earlier, when I'm afraid of man, when I'm living in fear of people and what they think, I'm trembling, I'm full of fear and anxiety. So basically the trembling, the fear, the anxiousness of people and what they think and their approval it lays a snare and a snare is something that catches a person unaware. So basically I may living in my, my life and making decisions based on making sure that people approve of me, making sure that I'm pleasing people, making sure that, that like basically just out, I'm afraid of what people think. And so if I make a decision that's contradicting the popular thing, the trendy thing, then I'm, I, I, I want to totally ignore that at all costs because I care too much about what people think. Um, and I'm not okay with people not thinking highly of me because I'm going a different route. Um, and we may in the moment think that like we're totally doing what we should be doing because we're, because people are giving us the high fives, the pats on the backs. They're pleased with the decisions we're making because we're seeking to agree with everything they agree with. We're seeking to make sure that they approve of everything that we're doing. And so for a little while, we can really be oblivious to the destruction that it's causing, to the damage that it's causing, to how much it's separating us from being actually who God called us to be, how much it's actually preventing us from walking in close fellowship with God, how much it's preventing us from actually living the life of influence and stewarding the gifts and the passions that God has actually put in us to boldly live out. But whenever it's like we're just so zoned in and focused on making sure people like us, we can kind of just forget the beauty of what we're actually called to, even though it requires sacrifice of everybody agreeing of what we are doing. And that's why fear of man is a snare. It lays a snare. It leads me to something that catches me off guard. It's unaware, like it, it's going to end up leading to destruction in my life. It's going to, it's going to cause me to conform to be somebody I was never meant to be. It's going to cause me to conform to living a life that I'm going to look back and it's like, that's actually not the life I wanted to live. It's the life that everyone else wanted me to live. It's the life that the world was living. And I thought that that was the means by which I could be happy was if everybody was happy with me and it lays a snare. And that's something that catches a person unaware. But if you keep reading, whoever trusts, what does that word trust mean? It's confident. I'm confident in the Lord. The midwives, they were confident in God. They trusted in God. They feared God. He was holy. He was like no other. He was worthy of their obedience, even if it meant being disobedient to the king's orders. He is on the throne. And so I'm going to do what is right in the eyes of my God. But whoever trusts in the Lord is safe. I love that word. I think safe is one of my favorite words. And I think sometimes we get confused on what safety is. Sometimes we think that safety means making sure that everybody likes us. We live in a, we live totally afraid of people and what they think. So we're constantly living like a life of trying to make sure that they agree with everything that we're doing because we think that safety is the approval of people. And it's, it's unsafe whenever I go against the grain. It's unsafe whenever I do 
I'm the, when I'm the oddball. But here we read that when I trust in the Lord, it's actually a safe place. Yeah, it requires risk. Yeah, it requires me to deny myself. Yeah, it's sacrificial. Yeah, it's not the easy route. It's actually the narrow road, but it's actually the safest I've ever felt because he is my refuge and my strength. He is my ever-present help. He is. And that word safe, it actually means to be shielded from danger, from destruction, from injury, from damage. Isn't that good? Those who are afraid of people, it lays a snare. It catches you off guard when you look up and realize I've lived the life I wasn't made to live because I lived a life just trying to please people. But those who trust in the Lord find safety and end up living the life they were made to live and it's better than any life they could have ever tried to manufacture on their own. This is my encouragement to myself <laughs> from the word of God. This is honestly God's encouragement to myself and to you today. Live in fear of the Lord. May it be said that because you feared the Lord, you lived the life you lived. Because you feared the Lord, you made the decisions that you made. Let's live in fear of the Lord, not live afraid of people. Because get this. I can't be afraid of people and love them well at the same time. I can't live just totally trembling before people so afraid of what they think about me and then wholeheartedly love them. But God is love. So to live a life in fear, in reverence, in awe, in submission to love himself, I am then compelled by that love to love people so well. Isn't that beautiful? Be encouraged. May it be because you fear the Lord and you make the decisions you make today. And I commit to doing the same. <laughs> Guys, I love you so much. I hope you enjoyed Remy's little, his little YouTube debut. <laughs> Y'all are wonderful. And I'm so, so excited about what God has in store for your life. And I hope that you're encouraged. Bye, guys.